If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Revelation 21. Revelation 21. And today I want to talk to you about all things new. Don't you like new things? I don't know about you, but I've had one new car in my lifetime. All right? And what's so funny about it is it turned out to be a lemon. All right? <laughs> when we were in Lawton, every time we went to Arby's, it wouldn't start. I, Lori and I were just baffled by it. But that new car smell, that new house smell, all right, the, them smells of things that are new. And everybody like, likes new things. And I thank God that one day, soon, He is going to make all things new. If you have a bulletin and want to follow along, number one, here's our outline. A new heaven and earth. A new heaven and earth. Number two, a new fellowship with God. We have fellowship with God through the person of the Holy Spirit. But God is not beside us. God is not in our presence. We cannot see Him, though that we feel Him and know He is there through the Holy Spirit. And number three, a new relationship with God. Oh, folks, I cannot tell you how excited I am to preach on heaven. It is going to be an amazing thing. You know, throughout history, Christians have had a great desire to see God and Jesus in this wonderful place called heaven. When you think about it, everything connected to our spiritual life and destiny is wrapped up in heaven. Our citizenship, our inheritance, our rewards, our treasure, our eternal home, and all believers of all ages will be there. In family, I can't wait to see my mother and my father. A genuine and strong longing for heaven has many benefits to the Christian. It is an indication that you are truly saved. It will help you walk with Christ daily. It will bring joy to your life even in the midst of suffering and trials. It will make you want to serve God and walk with God daily. Heaven is mentioned 50 times in the book of Revelation and over 500 times in the Bible. I do, not, I do not know about you, but I cannot wait to get to heaven. And I've always said this too. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die to get there. Have you noticed that? Man, leave the death thing alone. And, and I understand many of you are holding out for the rapture, but folks, any way, okay, any way I go, because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Have no fear in death. It is the only perfect place where there is no temptation and no sin. In our text, John gives us a description of what heaven is going to be like. And we will get more into the details of it next week. But I want to remind you of three things as we start of this message. Number one, there's three heavens as we know it. The first heaven is the atmosphere. When we uh, was looking into the sky and we see the stars, that is the atmosphere called heaven. Then the second heaven is the stellar heaven, which is the galaxies and space travel. Then the third heaven is where God is. It is where the throne of God is. It is where Jesus is at this time. And another thing I want you to, to remind you of, God will destroy the earth three times. In the Old Testament, he did it through the flood. We talked about the tribulation time also that he destroyed the earth. And after the thousand-year millennium, uh, he will destroy the earth as we know it again. Then there's three Jerusalems in the Bible. Number one is the Old Testament, the city of David, and we can see that and we know all about it. Uh, the New Jerusalem, where Jesus rules during the millennium, uh, is also a New Jerusalem. And the one also that we are waiting on is the New, new Jerusalem, the final resting place, which we will call heaven. So just keep those in mind as we study His Word. Number one, a new heaven and an earth. Now I saw, and this is the last place that you will see John having a vision. He will describe things, but an angel uh, will speak to him about those things. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first 
uh, the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And folks, here we see a new heaven. And when we think about heaven, we always think of up, you know, way up there, the, the, the abode of God. But here, I believe what he is going to do, and again, this is my personal opinion, all right? He is going to make a new heaven and new earth. And one of the reasons, he, you know, as far as uh, the heaven is, if you remember that uh, in the book of Ephesians, the Bible says Satan is prince and power of the air, okay? And here's, here's one thought. You have, to, you, you have to know this, and you have to understand to understand today. Heaven is nothing like what we think in our minds and in our thoughts. It is not. You cannot you know, humanly describe it. You cannot begin to think of how wonderful heaven is. And it says the first earth, first heaven, the first earth passed away, and there was also no more sea. And why would he mention sea? Well, if you think about it, two-thirds of the world in the earth as we say it is, is with water. Okay, and when you think of the sea, I don't know about you, but even you know, I've never been on a cruise, all right. But I've been in the ocean and I've been in water, and there's creepy things in water. I noticed, <laughs> all right. I'll be on the beach and I'll go out there, and I never go deeper than than waist deep, all right, because there's critters. The further you go out, and when you feel something touching you, man, I'm telling you, I'm like Peter. We're walking on water to get away from that stuff, all right. So even when you think of the sea, all right, shipwrecks, uh, the Titanic, all these things, it has a negative connotation. And the reason we don't need a sea, again, is because of the system. Everything we based our earth on, and even our bodies, are made up of water. Okay, water. And it's just not going to be necessary in heaven, because we are, we are in our glorified bodies. Okay, so you see that, that that is not necessary. Then I, John, saw the holy city, Jerusalem. And folks, I am just telling you, you can pick out the most beautiful place. The most beautiful place Lori and I have been is the Great Cayman Islands. Okay, in our church at First Baptist Anama sent us there on our 10th anniversary. And I kid you not, you can be in 10 feet of water uh, around there, and if there was a silver dollar on the bottom, you could tell it whether it was heads or tails. You sit out on that beach, and you watch the sun go down, and you think, oh my goodness, this is crazy. They have the best tasting mango. <laughs> We'd have mango for breakfast. I'm telling you, uh, and, and again, you cannot compare it to heaven, but it was as close that I have been, the most beautiful place I have been. And I'm telling you, that will not hold the light to what heaven is truly going to be about. That's why we should be excited about heaven. That's why there should not be apprehensions or fear when we are talking about heaven. If you know you, uh, Christ is your personal Lord and Savior, I promise you, according to the Word of God, you will go to heaven. You will see Him and be in that holy city, that new Jerusalem that the choir spoke of. Coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for a husband's. And again, I've done many weddings. Uh, you know, even I can remember mine, uh, you know, 43 and a half years ago. And I'll tell you, I was a nervous wreck. All right. I just, uh, you know, I was thinking of, you know, this, this means forever. All right. Even the pastor that uh, married us, we were in his office beforehand. And he looks at me about 10 minutes before it starts. And he said, Mike, this is your last chance. And I told Lori, which she worked for, she was a church secretary, and she, she got on him when we got back from our honeymoon, all right? But what I'm saying is, when you look at a bride, I've done many, 
All right. Normally the groom is kind of shaking and nervous and all, and, and the bride is also. But I cannot tell you how long it takes a bride to get ready. All right. Two o'clock kickoff is what I call it. They're up here at nine o'clock in the morning. And I'm thinking, what takes five hours? What are they trying to do? They're trying to look perfect for their husband to be. All dressed in white. The makeup is incredible. The flowers and all these things are beautiful. And of course, we as Christians are the bride of Christ. And I am telling you, uh, God loves us. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Steve and Betty. for Folks, I cannot tell you how much God... I cannot even put it into words. For Him to be on the cross... And him to be dying, him to go through what he went through, and yet he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Folks, that is agape love. That is love that can only come from God. You know, I've thought about this many times. Jesus is the only one who started in heaven came to earth, and went back to heaven. And I'll be honest with you folks, if I was Jesus and I was up there and I knew what was going to happen, because Jesus knew what was going to happen. All right? I mean, I wouldn't say I would balk at it, but most of us would think twice about coming to a filthy place like this earth. But He did. Why? Because He loves us. We are the bride of Christ. Isaiah, an Old Testament prophet, prophet, Isaiah 65, go there with me. Isaiah 65, verse 17, Behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. See, God created a perfect place called the Garden of Eden. God told them, man and woman, Adam and Eve, there's only one thing you can't do. Does it sound like a toddler to you? You tell a toddler not to touch your stereo, I'm telling you, they are going to touch your stereo. You tell a toddler, toddler not to eat anything, you know, before, they'll eat it every time. Adam and Eve messed it up. It was a perfect utopia. But I'm saying this, the, the end thing, the end heaven is going to be even more beautiful and pristine as that. We just got through uh, those who like to play golf and the Masters golf tournament. And man, I, I kind of just get glued to that. And I, one day, you know, if you want to do your pastor a favor, you buy a ticket to that. You buy airlines and you say, Pastor, come go with me for four days. <laughs> And man, it is, only golfers can appreciate that. But folks, I'm telling you, heaven is going to be a hundred times better than that. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For behold, I create a Jerusalem as a rejoicing, and her people as joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. The voice of weeping shall be no longer heard uh, in her, nor the voice of crying. Oh, folks, there is such pain and heartache here. There's such hurt here. You hurt deep, and you get to where you don't even really want to watch a news report because somebody else is killing someone. Our world is messed up. That's why we are so important to God. We are His hands. We are His feet. We are His, His mouthpiece. And we need to understand the place we are going is going to be perfect. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11. Go with me there. Hebrews 11, 8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents, and Isaac and Jacob and heirs with him on the same promise. For he waited for the city which foundations who builder and maker is God. And you know what I say about that? 
folks in the Old Testament had to have a strong faith. See, now we look back and we know that the cross happened. We know that Jesus lived. We know he died. We know he arose. We have a copy of his word. But yet these Old Testament people had to believe in something that has not even happened yet. Now, folks, I cannot tell you how important faith is to your walk with Christ. They were thinking, and, and think of the things they didn't have. They didn't have cars. They didn't have TVs. They didn't have the internet. They didn't have microwaves. But yet, they live for Christ in, in what they uh, were doing and who they were. And it says, also, for the city which foundations and who make it maker is God. Folks, when God makes something it will be perfect. Then the last scripture on this part, 1 Corinthians 2.9. 1 Corinthians 2.9. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. You try to get your best definition and your best image in your mind and I'm telling you, John and Paul, who got to see heaven, they got a glimpse of heaven. Even they said, man, I, I can't even tell you. I am speechless, okay? Speechless. So we see the new heaven and the earth. And then we see a new fellowship with God. Look at verse 3. And I heard a loud voice. By the way, loud voice, this is the 20th time we have heard this in Revelation. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell, dwell with them, and they shall be his people. Oh, folks, the tabernacle of God is the presence of God. In the Old Testament, it was in uh, you know the Holy of Holies. The presence of God is with men. God, when we get to heaven, will be there. Because I've even had people in witnessing saying, how do you pray to a God that you've never seen? How do you pray to a God that, you know, as far as you know, he really hasn't done anything for you? How can you pray? And the key is what I said before, folks. It's faith. It is faith. And it says, coming, it says, uh, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with him. Do you realize that you're going to get to talk to God and you get to talk to Jesus? Can you imagine that? You know, I've heard people say before, well, I'm going to ask him. About this. And you know what I think? I think your mouth is going to drop first. And I think all those things, because, folks, we live in a broken world. It's broken. It's messed up. And it is so far from earth that I can't even describe it. One word, if you pin me down and say one word to describe heaven is perfect. We're not perfect. Man is not perfect. We don't live in a perfect environment. We aren't a perfect church because we aren't perfect people. But we are forgiven. And we are forgiven. And God, is He has already created a place for us. John 14. Go with me there. John 14. You know this. It's quoted many times at funerals. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't worry. God's got it. Well, I don't know what it's going to be like. Well, I don't know what we're going to do. I can tell you one thing we're going to do. We're going to worship. We're going to praise. We're going to be more alive than we ever been. I am going to sing tenor <laughs> on pitch. Amen. Praise God. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. You know, I'm all for the old songs, but this one, give me a cabin in the woods. Well, you can have the cabin, all right? mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Folks, he's been preparing this for over 2,000 years. Anything, anything that God and Jesus makes will be 
perfect. We'll be perfect. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And boy, I know sometimes, you know, we'll get a new house or we'll get a new car and we'll get something. Hey, what do you think of that? All right. <laughs> well, folks, I'm just telling you, God's house, God's just going to look at you and lie. You go, that ain't nothing. What are you talking about? We're talking about mansions. We're talking about his preparation. We're talking about heaven. Okay, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. Oh, folks, we will be his. There will be no arguing. There will be no hate. And it says, and God himself will be with them and be their God. And here it is. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. No tears in heaven. And you know what some people say? Well, if I get up there and I don't see my grandma or I don't see my parents, what am I going to do? I'm going to start crying. Folks, I believe with all my heart, one of the things that God is going to do is he's going to erase those negative thoughts from your head. You're not going to, we're not going to be thinking about things like that. We're going to be focusing on God. We're going to be focusing on Jesus. We're going to be focusing on those, those mansions and the river, the water, crystal clear water. We're going to be focused on all those things. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There'll be no more death. Boy, won't, won't, won't that be great? Nobody dies up there. No aging up there. And I heard, I believe, Steve, I believe it was J. Harold Smith that basically he came by and basically said that he believes that everyone will be 33 years old. Man, I like his thinking. 33, I was in my pride. All right. And again, I'm just repeating what I, you know, and don't, my memory's not always right, but I'm pretty sure it was he, he that said that. And I just thought, wow. And it says, no more sorrow, no more crying. There shall be no more pain. Okay? Man, we go through pain every day. When my feet hit the floor, my feet hurt. All right? I woke up the other day, uh, uh, Thursday, with a splitting headache. I don't have headaches, but it was killing me. All right? All those things will pass away, and the former things have passed away. First John 3. First John 3. First John 3, 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the children of God. Hey, I was proud of my daddy, and you know, I, you know, I probably pulled one of those when I was a kid, and my daddy can beat your daddy up. But folks, I am telling you, God himself is our heavenly Father. We are children of God. I hope that can compute in your mind. And it says, therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are the children of God twice and has not been yet revealed what we shall be. And you can, <coughs> you can look and you can think and you can guess. I don't know all that's going to be about heaven. I don't know everything. All right, some things... That's why they call mysteries. But I know these things are true. We will have glorified, perfect bodies. And it says no temptation, no sin. I can't imagine. But we know when he is revealed, we will be, we will be like him, for we shall see him as he is. You know, Truthfully, folks, I want to be like Jesus. I really do. But man, I fail him. I know there's some times he's just looking up there and he's just saying, you're a knucklehead. Folks, we're not perfect, but we need to strive for perfection. Man, I'll be so glad to get rid of this body. Just get rid of it. It is fallen. It is fallen. And we will be like Jesus. 
And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. And the Bible says back in Revelation, no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain, and the former things have passed away. Well, folks, we'll be in the presence of God. We will think pure thoughts. We will say pure words. There won't be any attitudes in heaven. It will be perfect. So we see a new heaven and we see a new earth and we see a new fellowship with God. A new fellowship with God. And the last thing is a new relationship with God. Look at verse 5. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Folks, all is all-encompassing. Everything you see up there will be brand new. And he said to me, write these words, for they are true and faithful. Folks, we've heard this several times in the book of Revelation. God is true. God's never lied. Let me tell you something that a lot of people don't believe. God has never let you down. See, we think he did because we didn't get what we wanted. But if we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer and mean it, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It may not have been the answer that you were looking for, but there's a reason and a, a cause. There's something that God is trying to teach you even in the extremely difficult times. And he said to me, it is done. You know what it, I thought of when I read this the first time a couple of weeks ago? I think of Jesus Christ on the cross. And he said, it is finished. I have came. I have done what God has asked me to do. I have finished my life. And the Bible says he gave up the spirit and he died. Oh, folks, I am telling you, it is finished. It is done. You can take this to the bank. This is a promise from God. We are going to heaven as Christians. There are streets of gold. There are pearl gates up there. It is done. It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega. He spoke the world into existence in Genesis. Well, I don't believe that. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you got a problem if you don't believe that, is all I can say. Because my Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In no whoosh bang theory, okay? It's not creation. I mean, it, it's something. You, I'm just telling you, we didn't crawl out of a pond and start walking on all fours. And the, it just, it's crazy. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of water of life freely to him who that thirst. And even the Beatitude says, basically, if you're thirsty, come to the well. Jesus told the lady, come to the well. You're not understanding. I'm not talking about physical water. He says, I am the water of life. I am life. Won't it be good not to thirst again? I mean, you think about it, man. I remember in Mexico one time, we were laying tile, Scott, out in the hot sun, and we put a thermometer thing on the tile itself that we were laying, and about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it was 116. And I had two guys fall out that day. Man, we were pumping Gatorade with them, pumping Gatorade, and I'm telling you, it was, it was just crazy. It was just crazy, and we couldn't drink enough water. We couldn't drink enough Gatorade, but we got it done. We told these folks it would be done by a certain date, and we had to work 14 hours that last day to get it done. Folks, no more thirst. No more thirst. Everything, everything will be perfect. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And what's mine is his. What's his is mine. 
He's my heavenly father. And I, will, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, uh, the murderers, sexual, immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. He tells all the good stuff all the things that are going to be happening in the first seven verses. And then he reminds people. He writes down, but don't forget, if you do not go there, hell is where you are going to go. 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 3, verse 1. I mean, excuse me. 1 Peter 1, 3, I got him backwards there. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. What is our hope in? Our hope is in Jesus. And the same God that raised Jesus from the dead can help us, folks, to an inheritance. Don't you, don't you like inheritances? <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, incorruptible undefiled, that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Folks, we got a reservation. Man, and, and I understand nice restaurants and, you know, places we go, and we got a reservation. Even a treehouse. You can get, you can go to a treehouse. But I promise you, heaven, <laughs> heaven is it, all right? Reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Oh, folks, we have a reservation. It cannot be canceled. It cannot be revoked. It is heaven, the place of God. And then Romans chapter 8. I close with this one, Romans 8. Verse 5, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Just as there is a heaven and a hell, folks, there is a flesh, our flesh, living for ourselves, doing what we want to do, not considering God in all things. There's the flesh, and there's the Spirit, the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Verse 6, to be carly minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And folks, heaven is going to be so peaceful. There'll be no alarms up there, folks. None. Don't have to close the gates. It'll be perfect peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. Now look at this. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Oh, folks, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we talked about hell last week, and, and we should fear a place called hell. But folks, I am telling you, there is an option, there is something called heaven that you can have in your own life if you will admit that you're a sinner. If you repent of your sin, saying, I don't want to do it anymore. I want to change. I want God to change me and make Jesus Lord of your life, saying, God, I give you everything. I'm not giving you part of me. I'm not trying to make any bargains with you. God, I give all that I am to re you. I surrender all to you. You can be guaranteed a place in heaven. Father, thank you for this day. God, thank you for your holy word. God, it is so encouraging, God, to know that we as Christians have an inheritance, that we have a perfect place to go. And God, my prayer today, if there's just one here today that doesn't know you, that they would trust in you, God that they would realize they're, they can't work their way in, they can't be good enough, they can't go to church enough. They just can't. They can't go on their own works. God, it's grace. 
God's riches at Christ's expense. God, I pray that they would just lay down their thoughts, that they would put those thoughts aside and just come to Jesus. That's where the abundant life is. That's where that peaceful life is. That's where you are, and you are who we're going to spend all of eternity with. So God, I thank you that, that there are many, many, many in here that know you as personal Lord and Savior. And God, I pray that they would also understand that the time is short. We need to be sharing Christ with others around us. Others may need to follow you in baptism. Lord, even join the church. God, if that's what the Holy Spirit tells them to do, God, this is your invitation. This is your church. So God, I pray that you would do what's with it, what you choose. God, you are in control of this service. I just pray that your Holy Spirit would convict hearts and move in and among us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Would you stand to your feet and if God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?